seems to be floating in the air just barely the uh, stop magnet on top and you can make it go closer to the end of the axle with the three magnets or you can back it off by turning these four screws and uh, I have a stop magnet down here too goes right up there see right goes right up the middle the uh, there's a block wall I have three magnets on the end of the shaft stuck together quarter inch so it's like uh, three quarter inch long and they uh, they have kind of a block wall right in the middle where if you bias the magnets on the side the centering magnets let's call them I have pairs here pair here pair here at five positions like a pentagon and that's keeping it fore and aft I'm mean not fore and aft just centered and if you have these uh, end magnets uh, biased and they're positioned to these magnets this way it just goes whew, and it pushes it really hard that way the axle and if you have it the other way these these kind of on this on this side of these magnets it it's biased to want to shoot it up this way and then there's that block wall right in the middle and I have this so it wants to push upward with pretty good force and then I have the same thing I have five magnet centering on the top and let's see there's the three magnets you see them inside there and then I have this one on top uh, a stop magnet that comes all the way down through and the critical adjustment is these four screws to make this go closer or further away so let's see how it goes it's pretty good I'll have to say it's working Sometimes it was rubbing on the top magnet and it would make a uh, kind of a groan and a squeak. You could tell there was some metal on metal going on. I have to say this is floating right now. I haven't balanced this rotor either. I need to put it uh, horizontal. And when it settles, you know, put little counterweights until it never settles in one point. But it goes pretty good. Let's give it some. This was hard to do pretty heavy rotor okay so what I think I'll be doing is putting some motor coils that come in like this maybe one over here and one over there and that's the way I'll make it spin and then I'll put some generator coils one on top, one below. Maybe four of them, I don't know. See if I can loop it like I always am trying to do. What I'm thinking with the motor coils is instead of having them like straight 
at the magnets. I'm going to have them slanted a little bit, about 15 degrees. I remember Norman Wooten was saying that the gray motor he had, it had a slanted course, 15 degrees. I believe it was 15 degrees. Not straight, but a little bit. So pushes it a little better. That's what I'm thinking right now. And have uh, directional winds with Litz wire. And maybe I can get it down to 5 or 10 milliamps. And uh, I want to do what uh, David Bowling is doing with his tri filers, where it stops self induction, Tesla called it. And uh, if I get it up to a certain RPM with 28 magnets. Yeah, I won't need that high of RPM to get in that uh, frequency window where it doesn't have lens, I don't think. 12 magnets is 2800. 16 magnets is 2100 RPM. So. I think. 12 magnets, 28, 24 is 1400, so maybe around 1200 RPM, it'll, it'll hit that window. Where lens law can't really keep up. As David Bowling says, uh, you outrun it outrun lens law. By the time lens law manifests with any force, the magnets already pass that point where it would cause breaking to the rotor. And so you want to outrun it and keep ahead of it. So here's this project. Okay, thanks for watching.